All right, here's a quick walkthrough of how to do um, what I'm going to call the accumulator pattern. This is a very common pattern in programming where I am walking through a list and I am counting something up. Um, so we'll start with counting the consonants. So count consonants. Um, I'm going to make a function called count consonants. It's going to take a word as an argument and it's going to return the number of consonants. I use n consonants for the value. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and set up a test that will just at the bottom print out a couple of calls on my function. Um, great. So, ah, that doesn't fit. I'll make it dumb. All right. Um, and I'll do one more. Great. So, um, what I'm doing here, when you define a function, of course, it doesn't run on its own. So, these will run it. So, at the, when my code runs, it's going to print hello, and then whatever the result of this is for hello, and then dump, and the result for dump, and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so the, the basic idea, the first thing I'm going to do is set up the value that I'm going to be building. So I'm going to build up a count, which is an integer. So I'll start by creating a variable called n constants and setting it to 0, and then returning it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this code just to see that my setup worked. Of course, it doesn't yet have the correct answer. So right now, it says print hello. It passes hello up here, sets the value to zero, returns zero. Hello zero, does the same thing for dump and for zcxcv. All right, so this means my code setup is working. Notice I run my code all the time. Um, sorry, runs just out of the screencast. But you should be running your code all the time too um, to make sure you're not making basic syntax errors or other problems that will frustrate you later. All right, now for the accumulator pattern, we're almost always going to be doing a for loop. So for, you then give it a variable name, so I'm going to call it letter in word. And now everything in this for loop is going to run each time. So if I just said n consonants plus equals one, for example, um, that's syntactic sugar for n consonants equals n consonants plus one, it just saves you a little typing. Then for each letter in the word, we would add one to the number of consonants, and we'll return that number. So let's go ahead and test that out. All right, now I've counted that hello has five letters, dump has four letters, and zcxcv has five letters. Of course, I didn't count the consonants, um, so I haven't done the job yet. So most accumulator problems do something more complicated than counting all the things. So usually in this for loop, you're going to have some logic, and depending on the problem, that logic might be very complicated or very simple. All right, so in this case, um, I am going to uh, go ahead and put an if statement in here, and I'll say if letter um, equals equals h and constants plus equals 1. Now, in this case, it's going to count all the H's. And let's see if that works with that if statement. Run. Great. Hello has one H. Dump has zero H's. ZCXCV has zero H's. So this is now working. Now, of course, I could, at this point, just start enumerating all the consonants and 20 lines of code later, I would have a successful thing. So now I'm counting B's or C's and so on and so forth. Um, Python has a handy little bit of shorthand for that. You might think that you would say if letter equals B or C or D. That is not actually going to work because that's not how OR works. Um, if you want to do that pattern, what Python says is you can say if letter in and then you can give it a sequence of things to test. So I can say if letter in B, C, D, F, G, H, 
J K L M N P Q R S T V W X Y Z. All right. And now run it. And hello has three consonants, dump has three consonants, and ZCXCV has five consonants. So there, I have now made my first accumulator pattern. Again, I set up the variable I'm going to be creating. I um, looped through my sequence. And then for each um, letter, I did some sort of test and added or didn't add to my, um, my thing there. So um, I could make another very similar uh, pattern. Let's say I want to make a function that um, blank out vowels. So this function is going to create a new word and it's going to replace all the vowels with blanks. So now instead of n consonants, it's going to be blanked word I'm going to build. And you can add strings just like you can add numbers. So I'm going to say blanked word equals letter. Um, so in this case, instead of adding one, I'm adding the letter to the word. And here I can just change this out. Oops, blank out vowels. And I'll run that. So now it the return value was the thing with no vowels. If I wanted it blanked out, I could add an else statement here. All right. And now I just replace the vowels with an underscore, or I could change it to whatever I wanted. The same pattern, I'm just changing the logic inside of the loop. So this is a very common pattern in programming. I have some sequence I'm going through. I'm testing the elements of that sequence and I'm replacing them. You don't only do this with strings. You can do this with any sequence, including a list. Um, so if I had a list of numbers or a list of words, I might do a sequence with that. So um, get words without E, for example, could take a list of words and say four word and words. Um, and now I'm going to see, does that word have an E in it? So I might make a variable has E equals false. Oops. And then here's my accumulator. Words without E is going to be a list. Has E is false. So now for letter in word, if letter, letter, if the letter is E, has E equals true. All right, so now I'm going to say if not has E, words without E, append word, and then finally return words without E. So what on earth did I just do? I'm going to comment these things out and just run. get words without E. This takes a list of words, so hello, goodbye, what up, okay. So this is gonna take each of these words and hand it here. It's gonna make a new list that's an empty list. For each word, so it's gonna take hello. It's gonna say, okay, hello does not yet have an E. Now I'm gonna look at each letter in hello. So I look at the H, is H E? No, I look at the next letter, I look at the E, is E E? Yes, then has E is true, and so on and so forth, L L O. Now at the end I say, well, did has E ever get set to true? If not, we're gonna add it to the word list, otherwise we will, so now I'm gonna run it. So hello, didn't get added, goodbye, didn't get added, but what up, did get added. So there you go, get words without E. This is a more complicated accumulator pattern. I actually have two, two layers of accumulator. On the outside loop, I'm building a new list of words. 
And then on the inside, I'm looking at each letter in the word. So you could think of a list of words as a sequence of sequences. The whole list is a sequence, and then each word is itself a sequence of letters. All right. Um, we can go one step fancier. Um, let's make a count syllables uh, function, which takes a word. We're going to take a very simple definition of syllables. Um, count how many syllables are in word. Um, syllables are defined as sequences of vowels. All right, so in this case, if, for example, I had the word feature, um, well, that was a bad example. Um, this would count it as three syllables because it's going to say one, two, three. Obviously, this is uh, terrible for um, English. If it were Spanish, it'd be great, you know, if I were saying um, bailamos, that is correctly seen as three syllables. So we'll change our function to count Spanish syllables. I'm going to palabra there, PLB. Great. All right, so now let's count our syllabos en español. Um, so we're going to say four, I'll go back to English, letra. Four letter in word. Um, now my syllable count is the count, so z syllables equals zero, and at the end I'm going to be returning syllables, right? So now for each letter, what am I keeping track of? Are we in a syllable or not? So if letter is in A-E-I-O-U, See, I'm not just adding the syllables, right? Because that will just count the vowels. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm counting the syllables. So I'm going to need to create a new variable here called in syllable. Um, I'm spelling syllable right, but that's okay. How do you spell syllable? Yeah, I am spelling it right. It just looks funny. Okay. Um, great. So in syllable is going to tell me, am I in it or not? So now let's think about this. As I look at each letter, I say, is the letter one of the vowels? Okay, if so. If I'm not in a syllable, then I'm going to add one to my syllables, and I'm going to set in syllable to true. Otherwise, I'm going to set in syllable to false. Okay. So let's try this out. Count Spanish syllables. Print estamos, count Spanish syllables, estamos. So what this should do is it should um, successfully look at the E should be one syllable, the A and the O. So it's gonna be three. It's not a very good test. Ooh, and it only found two, so I did something wrong. Um, in syllables false, if not in syllables, syllables plus equals one, in syllables true, else. For letter and word. One, two, three. In A, E, I, O, U. Huh. Well, this is a chance now to do a little bit of debugging. And luckily, I'm looking at just one word, so this is not so hard to debug. I'm going to add some more print statements. Print letter comma, and syllable. So I'm just going to print out what's the letter um, and then are we in a syllable or not. And let's see what I did wrong. So E, we are not in a syllable when it gets there. That's true. Oh, you know what else I should print? Let me print the syllables count. All right. When we get to the S, we are in a syllable, and we've set it to one. Oh, I see what I did. My else was wrong. Because when I got to T, it should have been back to not in a syllable. So my logic was wrong there. We only add here that guy. Um, 
this else should be out at this level. In other words, if the letter is in it, then we're in a syllable, else we're false. So it wasn't switching it back to false. Now let's run it. Okay, so at E, might be clearer if I put this debug after the letter, the end of the for loop. Now see what's happening, and I fixed it. So at E, I'm in the syllable, and it's at one. At S, I'm not in the syllable. T, I'm not in the syllable. A, I start a new syllable, M, O, S. So that was kind of a bad example because it didn't have any um, um, gomiero in there. Now I've got one with two vowels in a row. Oops, I forgot to change it there. And now it successfully calls that three syllables. Gom, mier, on. Good. One, two, three. I can take out my debug statement now. And I can run it. Um, Something's wrong there. One, two, three, four. Oh, I didn't change it there. Good. All right. Excellent. So this is a little more complicated. I have a syllable count. I have a check to see if I'm in the syllable or not. I go through each thing and I check it. So. This is another accumulator pattern. I'll do one more before I end this lesson, um, although you can stop any time. Um, all right, so the last one I'm going to do is going to be with a sequence of numbers instead of a sequence of words. Um, so let's take a, um, let's make a function um, that will, uh, Let's see, add the previous number um, to each number. So um, so let's see, if I have a list of numbers, my new numbers is going to be a list for n in numbers. So the first number is going to just be 0. So the previous number is 0. So new numbers append n plus previous number. And then the previous number is equal to n. I'm going to return new numbers. Print 2, 7, 14. All right, let's see how that works. So we took the one, and we added nothing to it. We took the two, and we added the one to it. That made it three, right? We took the seven, we added the two to it. That made it nine. We took the 21, we added the seven to it. That made it 14. We took the 1203 and added the 14, made it 1217. Um, I don't know why you would want to do such a thing, but there we have an example of something not using any words at all, but it's still an accumulator pattern where what I'm doing is I'm going up to the number um, and I'm seeing what might um, fit in that, in that number. Um, there is a similar um, pattern might be useful if I wanted to um, find primes, for example. In this case, I would say for i in range um, 2 to n. So now um, I'm going to check for each number. If You might not know this sign. This says the remainder. So if the remainder of dividing n by i equals 0. Sorry, this is fine prime. Um, factors.
prime factors append uh, i turn prime factors. So what am I doing? Let's say that I have a number uh, 12. Um, find prime factors of 12. All right. I'm going to hand it 12. I'm going to make a new list of factors that includes nothing. I'm going to start at 2, and I'm going to end at 12. So I'm going to check. Is 12 divisible by 2? Um, if so, add 2 to the list of factors. So yes. Now I'm going to look at 3. Is 3 divisible by, is 12 divisible by 3? Yes. Is 12 divisible by 4? Yes. 5? No. 6? No. 7? No. 8? No. 9? No. 10? No. 11? No. So if I go ahead and I run this, 2, 3, 4, and 6 are the factors of 12. If I say give me the factors of 21, I get 3 and 7. 17, I get an empty list. Um, I have defined this as stopping before n. Um, in this case, I could stop at n over 2 because I know, um, oops, I know that um, you can't have a factor higher than half of a number. Um, now, if you wanted to include the 1, you could. Oh, let me get rid of the pile on example. Um, but that's a, this one will give you all the factors of a number. So that's pretty straightforward. doesn't use any lists. Instead, I'm getting a range of numbers, but it's the same idea. I'm going through, in this case, the list of numbers up to something. I'm checking for some mathematical possibility and I'm making a new list and returning it. This is the accumulator pattern. Um, you can do a whole lot with it. Um, and the basic idea is always you set some new variable you're going to build, you loop through some data, you add to the variable in some way, and you return it. All right, I hope this has been helpful.